So behind me was a punishment room or a cell for women who resisted rape, women who fought back, women the Europeans saw to be aggressive or very hard to handle. They kept them here naked, at times without food and water. If they had to give them food and water, then they passed it through the, through the small hole. So I say, this is part of the physical torture. You remember we visited the condemned cell where people were suffocated to death. So in all, for more than 400 years, Africans were taken through torture and brutalities to put some fear in us and also to deter us from rebelling or revolting. But to me, they did not succeed. Africans were not reluctant. Africans did not appreciate this condition. Africans resisted. Africans fought back. Because if we had not resisted, fought back, perhaps we would still be slaves. So what happened in Haiti motivated a lot. So Haiti became the first um, black republic. The Haitians drove away the French. So this wind of revolution was blowing. In North America, Caribbeans, the West Indies, there were a lot of revolt. So now, Europeans were compared, or they were forced to grant independence to Africans who held bondage. Because basically, when they talk about how the transatlantic slavery was abolished, they always stress on the part where some Europeans in Europe had pity on Africans and saw that it was inhumane, so they had to grant independence or liberation. But it's not like that. We fought, we resisted, and we prevailed. So that also led into the abolition of the transatlantic slavery. That is what I want to share. Naked or who was sick, I should say, naked and sick, they were left inside to die. Okay, so, lovely, what, that, that is one. No, in the dungeons, most of them were naked. Excuse me? In the dungeons, they were naked. Yes. Those who were sick had no medication. And they were left naked, basically, naked and to sick. To die, yes. And they died inside. Them. Yes, they died in the dungeons and the bodies were thrown away yes. into the ocean. I, I want to make sure. That yes. And this was mainly this uh, torture, and psychological effect to make sure that everyone who just resisted, resisted. know what was coming to them, so they'll just give in right. to the nastiness that these people want to do with our women. Uh, do you know, nothing has really changed much, because nope. in the new world in America now, there's still systematic racism. You know, there are laws that favor one party, that does not favor one party. There are certain crimes when this party commit uh, is free, when this one commit, Yes, so there's that systematic racism. And on the African continent also, we also have something we call neocolonization. You know, it's interesting that Africa has all the natural resources on Earth, but Africa does not own the natural resources. We have it, but we don't own it. Because at the end of the day, when you go to the industries, the gold mines, the big, big gold mines are not owned by Ghanaians. They are still owned by the West. So at the end of the day, if, if we are making $2 billion from gold revenue, $2 billion is leaving the country. It's the same with our oil industry. We have oil, but Ghana receives, yeah, Ghana receives less than 30% of the oil revenue. When we trade, when we sell our stuff on the world market, we don't determine our price. The prices are determined for us. So if my gold, my cocoa, or my bauxite is worth $5,000 now, they would tell me it's worth $500. It's worth $1,000. So it's just like, um, they still keep us separated, and disunited. Because if we are one, then you produce, we produce the same thing, then we, we are one. Because see, when we unite, we unite everything. Our minds, we unite our resources. So now, when we are united, we come out with a price. If you don't want to buy, it's okay, we sell among ourselves. But that is what is difficult for us because all the time they keep us disintegrated and separated. So it's very difficult for 
Africans here to speak with one voice. And even when it came to the situation of we using a single currency, it became a problem, especially with the former colonies of France. They use another currency. Um, they call it the CFA franc. And to be honest, <laughs> the CFA franc is produced in France. So that's a way of France still ruling the former countries in Africa. Because the thing is, those countries France ruled in, Ghana, in, in Africa don't have their central banks. So there's nothing like Bank of Cote d'Ivoire or Bank of Togo or Bank of Senegal. They all have their central bank in Paris. So you could imagine the, 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 the billions of euros France makes from its former colonies in Africa. So now, if Africans should use a single currency, then it's going to be a problem. Some of them will still want to retain what they had. So it's just that they keep us separated still. Because the more they separate us, the more they benefit from our resources. Yeah. For sure. So let's have a look at the female language. It's being done in a different way. Mm -hmm. yes, it's